Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I've had many requests in the past to do a tutorial on how to make a round tablecloth. So here's one that I've made and it's a rather large one. So there's a little bit of math involved when making this tablecloth and you also have to look at a variety of fabrics and select a fabric that best fits your situation. If you want to use an inexpensive fabric like quilting fabric, it's washable and it's available everywhere. But the width of your quilting fabric is 42 to 45 inches wide on average. Most of it, most of it is 42 inches wide. So if you have a really large table, you probably want to look at home decor fabric. Your home decor fabric is 45 inches on up. A lot of it is 50, you may even find some that is 60 inches. So make sure you read the description label on the bolt of fabric. What is the width? Another important thing is you need to look at how it is to be cleaned. Some, you cannot dry clean it. Some, you cannot have any water on it. Some, you can dry clean. So it's really important that you decide how you want to be able to care for it. Before you head to the fabric store to get the fabric, you need to measure your table. So you want to measure the diameter. That means measure it from one edge to the other side, that edge over there. Then you want to measure the drop length. In other words, how far down do you want the table to finish at? So you need to add all of these numbers together. So I'm just going to throw some numbers in. I'm making up a size of a table. Let's say your tabletop, the diameter, is 50 inches. Then I want a drop length of six inches on each side. So I'm going to measure, or excuse me, I'm going to multiply the drop length by two. So that's 12 inches. Then I'm going to do a half inch wide hem. So I'm actually going to add one inch. So that comes out to 63 inches. Let's say your number came out, your final number came out to 40 inches for your table, the drop length, everything, the hem. So really you could look at quilting fabric to be your choice of fabric to do. So yours is going to actually be very easy to cut out. So you would take that fabric of yours and you would fold the selvage edges together. So let's pretend a selvage edge here and there. So you would fold it in half. Then you would take the raw edges and fold it in half. So now that you got your fabric folded, and let's say again that your final dimensions were 40 inches by, for everything, Cut that number in half, so that's 20. So either take a long ruler or a yardstick or tape measure, and from this corner, there's folded edge here and here. You're gonna put your 20, the 20 inch mark on your ruler up here in this corner, and you're gonna go down 20 inches. So let's pretend this is my yardstick and I'm going to mark right there. Then I'm going to keep that 20 inch uh, line on my ruler up here in the corner and put another mark. I'm going to keep doing that all the way around till I get to this side over here. So now you have a quarter circle. So go ahead and cut this circle out or cut on the drawn lines. And then when you open it up and unfold your fabric, you have a giant round circle. For those of you who cannot find any fabric 
that fits the size or your dimensions. This is real important. You're going to buy double the amount so that you can get enough fabric to create that giant round circle. So here it is. Let's say your table cloth, your dimensions are 63 inches. So you're actually going to have, like I said, buy double the amount and then cut your fabric in half from selvage edge to selvage edge. Cut one selvage edge off on each piece. So what you're going to create out of each piece is a giant half circle. So now you're going to take each piece, before you cut into it at all, you're going to take each of the pieces and bring the raw edges together on both pieces, raw edges. So now, after you folded your fabric, remember you wanted a diameter of, let's say, 63 inches, you're going to cut that number in half by two. Now, you're going to make sure you're using your finished size. So in my little uh, math calculation, I have 63 inches is the finished size. But because I'm cutting out two half circles, they need to be stitched together. So add another half inch for seam allowance. That comes out to 63 and a half inches. So you take the 63 and a half inches and divide it by two. That comes out to 31.75 inches. To just make it easier, I'm just going to round up and make it a full 32 inches. So this will be the size to cut two half circles out. So after you've folded your fabric, you've got a fold edge here and here, raw, raw edges here, and your selvage edges down here. So place your ruler or tape measure along here and you're going to put your uh, number that you've come up with, you're going to put that inch line up here in the corner. In my case, it's 32 inches. So I'm going to go down the 32 inches and place little marks and keep moving that ruler, leaving it at 32 inches, making now a quarter inch circle. So when you unfold it, you will have a half circle. So you do this to both of your half circle pieces. So what you'll wind up with is two half circles that are going to be stitched down the center of the tablecloth. Before you stitch the two pieces together, you want to do either a sewing machine overcast stitch on both raw edges. Don't, don't stitch them together. Don't do that. You want to stitch them separately from each other. If you have a serger sewing machine, you can serge the edges. So now bring both half circles together, front sides together. And then do a half inch wide seam all the way across. Then when you're done, you want to press the seam open so that it looks like this. Make sure it's nice and flat. Then you want to go half inch from the raw edge, the very outer edge of the tablecloth, and do something what we call is stay stitching. And it's something you would do on a curved edge. You're going to come in one half inch and stitch. And I recommend you lengthen your stitch to about 3.5. Then after you've done this stitch all the way around, make sure you press the edge flat because sometimes the edges will have a tendency to buckle and curl up. I find the next step, the easiest way to start preparing the hem is to fold the outer edge in slightly under a quarter inch and press it all the way around and take your time on pressing. 
Then you could do this one of two ways. You can fold it again and press. But the problem is, because it's such a narrow hem, it's too hard to do it that way, to fold it twice and press. So folding it once and press is pretty simple. So instead, go to your sewing machine, fold it the second time over at your sewing machine, and insert the needle right down in this inside folded edge. And on your sewing machine, you want to set the sewing machine to where every time you lift your foot off of the uh, foot pedal, the needle will land in the down position through the fabric. So stitch a little bit, then leave the needle down, fold it over, stitch a little bit, and keep doing that till you get all the way around. Then press the hem nice and flat. And when you're done, this is what it looks like. Now on my sample where I was showing you how to stitch it, I had black thread. You want to make sure you're using matching thread. And that little stay stitching line will be near the edge here all the way around. And because you use matching thread, they won't be able to see it. You could pull it out if you want to, but I just left mine in. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. If you have problem with the math, you can always go and just get one of those cheap little calculators at your local store. They are very helpful when you are trying to do your math calculations in sewing. Now, if you're interested in other tablecloths, especially for rectangle uh, tables, I have lots of tablecloth tutorials. So you want to just scroll down to the description section, click on the words show more and it will expand open and you will see the links. I'll also have links to my sewing tips of the week and my beginner's sewing machine tips in which I show you how to use the different presser feet on your machine. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.